G'day, I'm Matt. Welcome to another episode of Beer Pioneer. Our journey around the beautiful Port Phillip Bay has been long and arduous. And I tell you what, if you haven't found me on the end of a bar, this is where you'll find me, on the back of a horse. Anyway, off we go. Giddy up. Here we go. Yeah! In your own time. Abe, do you want to... We'll edit this bit out, but if you lead, lead her out a bit. He's out there, somewhere, crossing country, north to south, east to west, following rainbows for the liquid pot of gold. The man is amber obsessed. He's conquering fears, drinking boutique beers, just for you and me. He's a man on a mission, a liquid dietitian, a bearded brewery magician. Ah, oh, he's the beer pioneer. He is the beer pioneer. He's the beer pioneer. He's the admiral of cheer. He's the admiral of cheer. He is the amber cavalier. Musketeer. He's a malted musketeer. He is the baby buccaneer. He's a baby buccaneer. Oh, yes, he is the beer pioneer. Oh, yes, he is. Today I'm on Victoria's surf coast, finishing up my journey around the bay. Later on, I'll be visiting Salt Brewery and then getting some much needed R&R. &R. But first, let's pick up Buckley's tail. After escaping from his convict settlement in 1803, Buckley spent nearly 30 years in the harsh Australian bush. I really want to get a sense of what he felt, and what better way than on horseback. Were there horses around here back then? No, but there weren't charismatic beer show hosts around either, so let's not get bogged down in semantics. After donning my Dryzerbone and Akubra, I was ready for these rough and rowdy creatures. As I struck up a connection with these great animals, I realised how symbolic they were of my journey. After spending several hours finding some boots that fit unnecessarily well, it was time to find my horse, or as some would say, for the horse to find me. Nah, still going. Yeah, they're 11s and they're slightly too big, and another yeah. pair of 11s are slightly too small. Still going. No, haven't got one yet. Oh yeah, they're, they're probably better actually. And they're nine. You sure? Time to meet the great beast. Probably one of your more fearsome horses. I am not flexible. Oh, Jesus. Feel all right? I'm sure I would fall very elegantly if it came to that. Horses first came out to Australia in 1788 on the first fleet. Wonder if old William Buckley ever wished he was traveling on horseback. Why use your two when you can use the horses four? <laughs> That's what I always say. There's two things you should know about me. I prefer a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. And I also prefer a horse under me than an undersea horror me. Nah, that one, that one doesn't really work. Scrap that last one. What I love doing, getting out here in God's country out in the bush, get a bit of a mindset into how William Buckley would have felt. Just the isolation, you know, a bit of time to yourself with nothing but your thoughts. I've been told I've been given one of the roughest and toughest horses around. What was her name again, Abe? Oh, Bluebird. Yeah, bluebird. Big bad bluebird. Honestly, there's no place I feel more comfortable than right here on the back of a horse. You'll see some people wearing helmets when they're riding, but when I was a kid, the only helmet we needed was a good bloody attitude and a bit of know-how. Cheers. And on we go. Why? I'm not too sure. How this relates to William Buckley or beer is really anyone's guess, but we're here now, so let's bloody enjoy it. So Abe, how long did it take to tame these wild brumbies? Bit of an effort, mate. 
Yeah, especially when they've spent a few years out in the bush. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, the main part of their diet is uh, spent grain from the Rails Beach Brewery that we get. Spent grain is all the stuff left over from brewing beer. It's high in protein and amino acids. I'll be digging into some of this later, literally. Just like a cooked meal for them. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'll bring it back and it's still hot. Horses love it. I got a similar diet to these horses then. <laughs> huh, a little laugh from Abe there, hey? So you know it was a good one. Abe nearly never laughs. What you got to remember is you're the boss when you're on top of one of these beasts. They'll do what you tell them to. She's having a fucking feed. Bluebird, we got a show to do. Pull her head up, Matt. Lean back Here a bit, go, we'll put your weight into it, get up. This is all well and good, but why aren't we at a bloody brewery? This is a show about beer, what are we doing here? <laughs> you are a character, Bluebird. Bluebird and I mutually came to the decision that we should get going and we all decided it was time to head to the pub. And the crew were pretty over this too. <laughs> a bit further along the Great Ocean Road is Aries Inlet. Let's all take a moment to appreciate these epic drone shots. Or if you'd like to imagine, just pretend it's me up there flying. I'm flying up there, look at me fly as well as a classic Aussie lighthouse. There's also a classic Aussie pub. I'm visiting Aries Pub, home to Salt Brewing Co. And as usual, I'm kicking things off with a chat to the person who made it all happen. Can I call you the founder, the boss, the main man? The big cheese. The big cheese. Absolutely. Is that yep. what you prefer, the big cheese? Any of those. It's Tim. How's yeah. it going, Tim? Good, mate. You? Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> How, how did this business get going? So yeah, it's an old pub. It, it, it ran continuously until the Ash Wednesday fires. Then it actually got burnt to the ground. Right. And they operated for a couple of years out of what we now use as our malt room, which is just this crappy old tin shed. And that was all the pub had yeah. for um, a couple of years and then rebuilt the pub as it is now. Yeah. Yeah, right. And then, so I'm guessing you weren't there in 1904. 9, 1904, <laughs> you weren't quite there yet. When did you get involved? I had actually no ambition to own the pub, but I really liked having a pub in town. Around about 2010, the, the site went on the market as a whole. This is like the town square. You wait till this afternoon, right. there's just people everywhere. It's the space where people come. Yeah. So I all of a sudden thought that someone didn't do something that potentially would have a town without a pub in it. Not on Tim's watch, on your Tim. I had actually no ambition to own the pub, but I really liked having a pub in town. I pitched it to a few mates, all who went, that's a great idea. So a bunch of friends basically bought the pub. I live, that's, yeah, the dream. Yeah. I reckon a lot of mates have talked about doing something like that. Ah, it's only just hitting me now how little I've followed through on all those gonna buy the pub chats I've had. When did the brewery come about? I probably came from, from a different perspective. So I wasn't a home brewer, didn't really have much knowledge or interest even in, in the brewing game, yeah. but I liked beer. <laughs> and when we first went to open, the first people that came knocking were the big beer guys. And at the time that was Lion Nathan and CB. So they both came knocking on the door and said, great. You know, we'll supply with beer. And I said, what beers? And they said, oh, you know, all our beers. And I went, I don't want to just put those beers on, I want some good beers on. And, and then CUB obviously got bought out, then the profits go overseas, then they don't pay any taxes, and I was a bit like, I don't know about this. Yeah. So I sort of went, right, oh, we're going to put our own in. So we basically sourced our own equipment, hired a brewer, and then uh, we started making beer. Nice try, multinationals. Tim's got his watch out again, and this is another thing that's not happening on it. Where'd you ride the horse? Huh. Well, you know there's horse riding here. Oh. Blazing Saddles. Okay. Right, right, in town. Yeah, do you know who owns it? You guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, someone got fired for that one. We had a great time with Abe anyway. When you're setting up a shoe with a brewery, you always ask, do you have a horse riding yeah. facility <laughs> on site? <laughs> Do 
I'm at Salt Brewery, and it's time to take a little peek behind the curtain. We've got a great team of guys with really good knowledge, good skills. Um, Tyrone, our head brewer, I mean, he studied science at university before he became studied brewing. So he's really, really particular about every step, testing it, sending it off, getting the samples tested, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Which gives us the ability to brew consistent beer. Do you mind if I go chat to the brewer? Mate, absolutely, get in there. What's he like? He's a brewer. <laughs> <laughs> They're like little hobbits, aren't they? Yeah. No, you have a crack, he's a good fella. Awesome. All right, once again, time to pretend I know things about making beer. Can't let them find me out. I'm not a fraud, I belong here. Hey Tyrone, how's it going? Yeah, good mate. So, is this your first gig as a head brewer? First gig as head brewer, yeah. So. What, what were you doing before this? Uh, brewing at Little Creatures, um, and before that I was a scientist. I was a pretty keen home brewer for probably about a decade before moving across into professional. Yep. Had a friend who was uh, working as a brewer and was putting a bit of pressure on to come on down, we need more people, and threw the resume in and uh, have them look back. You got peer group pressure. Peer group there. pressure, yeah. Wow. That's how it goes with beer, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tim, you're the, the main man here. Yeah. He was saying that uh, brewers are all a bit different. Yeah. What do you agree with that? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Everyone's got their own quirks. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what makes you different then? Different? Oh, I definitely come in with uh, the scientist hat on right. a lot of times. And so. glasses. And glasses, yeah. <laughs> uh, quality and numbers are, are something that I, I really get lost in and, and try to drag the quality system up and, and improve that. And then, I mean, you got beakers and stuff happening over here. What's happening yeah. over here? That, that looks like genuine old yeah. school mad scientist sort of stuff. Yeah, lots of uh, measurements. And this is the, this is all the stuff that makes the consistency. Yeah, yeah. So we've got set ranges and, and targets we want to be hitting at, at all points. Graphs, lots of graphs, <laughs> lots of charts. All right, my time to shine. Yeah, a record LA result. Well, that's good. Well yeah. done. Yeah. I'll record LA results. Yeah. Right, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I am killing it over here. Chief <laughs> Brewer. Tim was saying that your consistency is right up there. Yeah, that's that's a big focus for me. Is I want week in week out to be really smooth. You get some cowboys who like to come in and throw this in, throw that in. They can get something amazing. Uh, it's not really my my big strength. The brewery's in full swing, and even Tim's being put to work. So what's going on? You got the boss on the shovel. Yeah, yeah, brew day today. So digging out the, the first brew of the day. Double IPA, big mash load. Do you need a hand, Tim? <laughs> okay, that was really just something you say to be polite. So this looks fun. I like get yeah. like being involved. Can you name the next beer after me? Uh, I've, I've done a lot of the hard work here. The three lighter? <laughs> So this, this is what this is what the horses eat, is it? Yes, yeah, straight yep. down the horses. Uh, it does. It smells great. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like I'd eat it for breakfast. You probably do. It's pretty much orange. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm knackered. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I am done with that. So what's what's happening in here today? So the the double IPA is in the kettle at the moment, yep. boiling away. So that's got probably about half an hour left. Okay. Uh, then we're going to transfer it across into one of the tanks in the corner. Yep. And it'll sit there for a few days and, and ferment away. The magic happens. The magic happens. <laughs> the yeast do their thing. That's where the science comes in. Yeah, that's where a lot, a lot of, of science waiting. A lot of, yeah, the yeast do most of the work. Yeah, yeah. So we just got to make sure they're, they're working hard enough. We move it into a bright tank yep. in between. So we carbonate it up, uh, more targets to hit. Yep. Uh, then we keg it, then it's off in the keg straight to the bar. If you're here on the right day, you're getting it within a couple of hours on. Right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. How long does it last on the tap? Probably not that long. Oh, in summer. Yeah. You're lucky to get to the end of the night sometimes. Yeah, right. As much as I like this place, part of me thinks they only agreed to do this show in order to get an extra pair of hands on deck. What a racket these guys are running. Hmm, maybe I should add my own spin on this recipe in return. here is because I'm surrounded by nature. Yeah. So Aries Inlet, we've got ocean on one side and we've got hundreds of thousands of acres of national park on the other. So if you own the pub and the brewery, 
You don't need to leave. Yeah, he would be the king of this town, right? Really. Pretty much the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> I rode a mayor before. Bluebird. Do you think the area um, affects, you know, the the beer and what this place is? Is it, is it sort of like seeped into the to the beer somehow? What we do tend to bring into it is our ethos of sustainability. You know, since we've started, we, we, we don't have money to see shepherds, so we're their only beer. Now, the reason we do it is I love their activism in protecting the ocean. They're not just protesters, they, they're actually activists. And we try and do that in the whole pub. You know, it's all sustainable seafood project, all free range, all, all of that stuff is what we try and do down here because you're so close to nature, living in a place like this, you, you're more inclined to want to preserve it. That makes sense. Yeah. I think I want your life. <laughs> How do I go, where do I start? <laughs> Time to taste some beers. Austin, thanks so much for taking me through some of these beers. Yeah, definitely. My pleasure. So where should we start? I guess at the at the salt down in the beginning? Yeah, I reckon start with European style lager using all Australian ingredients. Just nice, subtly expressive yeast. Get that lager character from it without being too over the top. I was thinking if, if I was going to describe this yeast, I would have said subtly expressive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Couldn't have put it better myself. Yeah. So what's this next one, the Session Ale? Yeah, so the Session Ale is sort of our aim at um, making a draft. We are a pub here, so we get a lot of people just coming in for a parmy and a pot. Yep. And a lot of the times you get people stuck in their old ways and they like draft. Yeah. So we brew something that sort of combats that with a little more craft to it. Yeah, that's that's nice. I mean, I yeah, I grew up on draft as well, so yeah. there's a it's almost like a nostalgia to it to the taste. Yeah, exactly. Lovely. Now this next one, uh, Tim was telling me a little bit about before. It's uh, there's a connection with the Sea Shepherd. Yeah, so 10% of all of our uh, proceeds from this beer, Moby, our pale ale, goes directly to Sea Shepherd to help with their efforts. Right. Yeah, so it's a good way to. Drink a pail and save a whale. <laughs> so this is a mm. good American styled Australian pale ale. So you've got a clean bitterness with some more new world hops, some of that old pine that you would get from the old school American pale ales, but just in a more new world Australian way. Right. Does yeah. it make you homesick? It does. Yeah. This one and our uh, double IPA. Definitely make me homesick. Tastes like home. Yeah, big hoppy beers are my love, so. Right, I'm trying to pick the accent. I'm gonna say Manhattan Beach, California. <laughs> How'd you know that? No, it's been pretty good. <laughs> Got a very keen keen ear. Yeah, that's so, spot on. This next one, this, this one feels like it maybe describes you. The kook. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this one is a ripping beer. We use uh, Australian blood oranges in the brewing process to give that nice citrus flavor yeah good old-fashioned Australian blood <laughs> oranges yeah. feels like the perfect beer to be drinking sitting out in the Sun Austin do you, do you realize we're both working right now yeah it's pretty good it's pretty good <laughs> yeah that one's all right now this one you were saying most. before this is this is your number one yeah this one you like the most big double IPA nice and hoppy this is actually what we're brewing in the brew house today oh well I was actually involved in that process yeah exactly so half raked out for us yeah that's good well <laughs> yeah, dirty work, someone's got to do it. Yeah. So it's got a really nice multi background and we use a boatload of hops to really get that big, bold flavour. Some tropical fruit in there. But mate, that's a bloody ripper. Yeah. It's dangerous though, sitting at 8.2%. We call it the cranky misses because you have a pot and then you're oh, right. a little bit tipsy. Maybe a couple more, you might have yourself a cranky missus. <laughs> You just gotta, it's about communication, okay? Maybe she won't be so cranky if you uh, had a sip and you go, look, honestly, <laughs> plans have changed a little. Yeah. Good, strong IPA. That doesn't taste like an 8.2%. It doesn't, it's sneaky. Two pints down, you're like, that was delicious. I'll Where am I? <laughs> yeah. mm. And finally, the coffee stout. And now we finish, this is the, I mean, color wise, it's all subtle differences. And then all of a sudden, bang. Yeah, a big, big dark coffee stout. Stout for breakfast? Yeah, coffee stout. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Early morning. 
Don't even talk to me before I've had my coffee stout. <laughs> Wake you up, get you fired up. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a ripping beer. Nice round malt character, a little bit of bitterness, but there's a lot of roasty and um, chocolate coffee notes that come through. And this is a, a gold medal winner, I believe? Yes, it is. A couple times over, and hopefully again this year. It's the funny thing about talking after drinking a, a bunch of beers. I was just feeling the same exact yeah. thing. <laughs> like my, my brain, I could feel it just sort of like floating out of the sky. <laughs> Thanks so much for taking me through these, Austin. You've been a, a magnificent host. Always good to meet a local. Awesome. Oh, cheers, cheers. to that. Better get some food in to soak it all up. What a cracking day. I tell you what, I couldn't think of a better way to finish off the day with a selection of food from the fine Aries Pub Kitchen. Cheers. After a few drinks and a big feed, always go for a swim in the wild ocean. That's what mum always said to me. So I'm hitting the beach. Okay, maybe not. With the crew ready to go in their beach gear, it's time for another slightly inebriated outro. Just over there, over the mighty Bass Strait, is where old William Buckley's story continues. But before I head over to finish our epic adventure, I need a little spot of R&R. &R. That was actually better than I remember it. All this beer and beach fun has taken its toll on me, so our caring producer has set me up with some relaxation time at a nearby retreat. He also signed me into a private yoga session for your amusement. I'm almost finished my journey, just one stop left, so next time I'll be following Buckley's path as he left the mainland and headed for Tasmania. And remember, if you've missed any episodes, you can find them all on our YouTube channel. I really don't want to see any of this, so I'm out of here. Catch you next time for our final episode of this season.